Well, we're back. And this is a very, very historic and very special day here on MUA TV because up until now, all of our interviews have been with makeup artists and hairstylists and others behind the camera. Today, we have something really special. We have a beautiful young lady, very famous young lady who's been in the business quite some time, who is a star of The Young and Restless at CBS. Miss Miss Judith Chapman. Judith, thank you so much Joe, for being here. Joe, thank you for <laughs> having me. This is so much fun. And this space is so gorgeous. Isn't it? Oh, thank you. Gosh, and bless you all. You've got, I mean, it's all professional. This is, this three is, cameras Judith, and all this. This, this is our, our Hollywood satellite studio. This is brilliant. Our main studio is in Orlando, Florida, My where I live. Mm -hmm. And uh, But, uh, you know, there are too many... There aren't enough people in Orlando to interview, really, as far as makeup artists, hairstylists, and celebrities. So we find ourselves coming to Los Angeles, and, and here we are. And well, I am so honored to be the first on-camera person the first. with all the brilliant people that you've done over the years, <laughs> and, and little old me. Thank you. So I'm and truly honored. And may I tell you, you are absolutely stunning. Oh, thank you. you are, thank you're, you. You're lovely. I work at it. <laughs> I work at it. Now, you know, you, know, you, you, go, you go back here now. You know, I'm, I was looking at your resume and um, we you know we were talking before we get into this you know you, you mentioned something to me just now while we were talking before we got on camera you have an experience with Orson Welles and you said you had worked with and him we, and I said we, I worked with him both. as well yeah I worked with him only for about three years oh, on, off and on I worked with him and one day one day <laughs> one day, day. day. <laughs> it was like a three year period right? yes and, I, and if I may share this with our, our audience when I worked with Orson Welles uh, he would call me in the, in the middle of the night and he'd say, I need, a, I need a, a, a special kind of nose for a production. And I'd say, well, Orson, when do you need this nose? Well, how about 7 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> well, OK, Orson, I've got a whole jar full of different kinds of noses. Where are you? I'm in Las Vegas. So I'd have to get on an airplane, and I'd have to get there. I'd have to bring a rubber nose. My Academy Award-winning graduate, Matthew Mungle, who won the Academy Award for Bram Stoker's Dracula, oh, was nominated for The Ghosts of Mississippi. He applied his very first appliance, rubber appliance, on Orson Welles. I, because we were doing the film Butterfly, mm -hmm. and I with couldn't Pia stay. I, on Peter's door. And I couldn't stay. So I, I, I thought, well, what a great opportunity to teach Matthew how to do this rubber nose. And, and, uh, and to give him some real film experience with a big star. So I didn't want to tell him who the star was because I was afraid he would he'd be petrified. So I didn't say anything to him. And we went to Las Vegas and the maid opens the door, you know, and we come in and she escorts us into the living room and in walks Orson Welles. I thought, I thought Matthew was going to just go, just faint right there. But he was a pro and we went into, the, into his dressing room and Orson sat down. And I, I applied the, the rubber nose. I said, now, Matthew, I'm going to show you how, how to do this. Did the rubber nose. I said, no. And, and I had, I already spoke to Orson about it. And he said, he said, well, I want to take it off. I want to make sure the kid knows how to do it. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> so as soon as it was done, I said, Matthew, can you do this? He says, he says, oh, yeah, I think so. And Orson, that was his cue to rip the rubber nose off. And he said, all right, now do it. Let the kid in. And he, yeah, he the did. kid can do Matthew it. Matthew did. He did it in five minutes. It was oh. he was he was remarkable. But anyway, we have we share that experience oh, absolutely. with Orson Welles. Tell me about great, your experience. Great. Oh well, yeah, you know nothing so grand as, as working with him for three years. But I did one of his uh, uh, Paul Masson wine commercials. Yes. But it was a Christmas special, so it was a champagne. Yeah. But there were problems with the script, and there was huge cast. But I was the principal, so yeah. I got to stand next to Orson, yeah. and there was a young man in the in the show in the shot as well. But everybody was given this list of do's and don'ts. Do not talk to Mr. Wells. Do not get in his eyesight. Do not get. And the back of my hair and my ego, they're, they're bristling. Everybody, we're shooting in this huge home in Brentwood. Everybody's told to go outside while the clients and the and the production company and every and the director and everybody's trying to make everybody else happy. And Orson is sitting in this huge chair with his feet up on a little stool in the middle of the room. And I refuse to go outside, so I'm kind of hovering in the corner reading this magazine at the end of the at this huge long football field of the living room. And all of a sudden, I hear this booming voice, and, and it says, "It's nice to be beautiful, isn't it?" <laughs> I ignored him. <laughs> 
He certainly wasn't I, looking in the mirror. No, no. He was looking at you. Yes. But anyway, and this was many years ago. But, uh, but then a few seconds later, another booming voice once again and goes, it's nice to be beautiful, isn't it? And I said, yes, Mr. Wells, and it's even nicer to be told. <laughs> And it That's was, but great. I think I just, he was so tickled by my response that it became my cue you. to go over and I sat on this little stool and I was still so young then yeah. and talking to him and he was like, all right, Judith, how's Hollywood treating you and how's, and I was like, nah, 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 and I'm just like <laughs> bitching about all this stuff and saying all this stuff. In the back of my mind, I'm going, I'm sitting at the feet of one of the greatest film theater yes, legends, icon, right? icon yeah. of the 20th century. Yes, yes. And so we spoke, I spent about 15 minutes with him and then he just he was so powerful and magnificent yeah. he just did this little gesture and I knew it was my cue to leave yeah. and I said thank you very much Mr. Wells I'll leave you alone now and he said and I'll see you on set how wonderful and so all these other people sat outside yes. terrified and they went uh-uh uh-uh yeah. so as a result of being a little brazen so I got had one of my greatest Experience. experience. Okay. But then what, <clears throat> what was so fabulous, and then many, many flash forward just to a few years ago, I ended up doing the West Coast production at the Old Globe Theater yeah. of Austin Pendleton's production of uh, called Orson's Shadow, about the meeting of Orson Welles and uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier. Mm -hmm. And Orson Welles used to tell Olivier, darling, it's time for you to get out of the 15th century and do something <laughs> a little more contemporary. contemporary. So this is an actual <laughs> collaboration, and he, they were going to do Rhinoceros. And uh, Orson Welles was going to direct it, and of course the other characters were um, uh, Olivier's, I mean, uh, I guess Olivier's still lovely but slightly deranged Vivian Lee, played by, <laughs> played by me. And, uh, and then, uh, oh gosh, my mind escapes me, it's, it's then Second Wife. But it's just it's yeah. wonderful, wonderful production. And thank God there was this brilliant New York actor that they put bit all this padding yes, for. Yes. But the meeting of the titans yes. and the battle of these, and these egos. Known. And actual, I had met him, yeah. and I had met him. Isn't that so wonderful? Great. My God. Those are the kind of experiences mm -hmm. that really make the, the, your career worthwhile. Yes, you know, just you know I, very I, rich. I, I met him originally, and uh, and we'll be getting to you, but I, I met him originally. <laughs> I don't mind basking in the shadow. <laughs> I, I met him originally. I did a, a rejuvenation makeup with lifts, mm -hmm. and I was a guest on the John Davidson show. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Sure, 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 sure. Studio 31 at, at CBS. And, right uh, across the hall from yeah, where I yeah, shoot. Exactly. <laughs> and I went, I, I did this, this rejuvenation with all these lifts, and the next day, I get a call. Uh, this is Orson Welles. And I said, oh, yeah, right. And I thought someone was joking. He says, oh, no, 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 this is Orson Welles. And he, and he says, I saw you yesterday. I, you know, his exact words were, I caught you yesterday on the, on the uh, 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 Davidson show. And he says, I've been shooting this film for 11 years. And um, uh, the actress, we wanted to do retakes from a, a shot that we did 11 years ago. And I was wondering if you would do that rejuvenation makeup on the actress. I said, it'll be my great pleasure. No charge whatsoever. Just bring her on over. She, he came over and the very next day when we did this makeup. Uh, and uh, he disappeared. And then I kept getting calls constantly for about three years. Every time he'd do something, he'd come over, I'd make him up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he'd scamper off, you know, and do whatever it was, commercials, whatever he was doing. So to go make money Amazing. so he then could go back and, and finance shoot his this, Falstaff right, or his Macbeth. Right, exactly. That they would. He would take years right. but I was in told the that, making because he <laughs> didn't have any right. money. I was told it. that he was shooting this picture, and everyone's familiar with it, except I, I wasn't familiar with it, except I knew that I had done that one insert shot. And, and he'd been shooting it for 11 years in his backyard, mm -hmm. in his garage, and yeah. in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. He was an amazing man. Yeah, amazing amazing man. He just, he just loved the craft. Yeah. And now, let me ask you this. Sure. You've been a teacher also. I have I taught. Understand. I have taught. I've taught several things. Uh, when I, I decided to drop out of L.A. quite a few years ago, about 50, I don't know, gosh, longer, no, um, about 20 years ago, and bought my first home in Palm Springs. And I eventually, after a couple of years, I was just, had just reached a point of up to here with L.A., sold my house here and decided to move to the desert full time mm -hmm. and said, okay, now I need to do something. Mm -hmm. So I went to the wonderful community college, the College of the Desert, and met Father, Dr. Father, Dr. Norman, the head of the fine arts department. I said, well, I'm so-and-so and I've done this and la-di-da, and if you ever want me to come and speak to any of your students. Mm -hmm. and he, 
they signed me up on the spot. I ended up teaching there for about five semesters. But what okay. happened, because I had gotten a little burned out on Hollywood. I've been working since I was 14 and working nonstop pretty much. I see the and, uh, Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I thought um, it had to be a mistake. No, 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 no. As I, I've always considered myself, that people say, oh, you're a TV star, you're this. I said, I'm, I've always, always, Joe, considered myself a working actor, yes. which for me implies yes. longevity yes. and diversity. Yes, absolutely. Of character. But so I ended up teaching there, but there for several semesters. And what happened, it so reignited my passion for the craft because mm -hmm. I was really going That's back to the does. basics. I was yeah. working with these young people, and not so young people. I mean, I had right. older students as well. But it really, I'd always had a fascination with directing. I found I really had a gift for teaching. Yes. I could get the performances yes. out of people. Yes. I could get people comfortable in their own skin. Yes. You may create the skin for them. Yes. I helped to create the emotions that get them to yes. that point. Yes. And uh, and so it just really started me on a serious road to directing. Now, have any of your students come back to you to thank Several, you? Yes, yes. Over the course of the years, I would have people call me and say, Judith, I worked with you a couple of years ago at COD, College of the Desert, but I'm auditioning for ACT or I'm auditioning right. for New York. And would you work with me on these monologues? Right. And I mean, I get goosebumps now yeah. thinking of it, that I actually was able to affect people's lives. But you learned way. also from teaching. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You, uh, it, but it's so filled, it learned, but again, got my passion back. What do you think is the most important thing that you may have learned from that experience? To always go back to the basics. To not get so into such a lofty place and going back to Orson Welles, what a perfect example. Yes. He, I mean, the, the films that he's done, the theater that he's done, but he was willing to work out of his garage, yes. work, you know, do a yes. commercial yes. with me, somebody like me, right. so he could make a few bucks so yes. he could go follow his passion. Right. It's the passion. The, having that child, that beginner's mind, and that, that excitement and exuberance, yes. and not this yes. blase, yes. oh, well, I do this, I do yeah. that. Forget that. <laughs> and when you lose that passion, yeah. so that, that reignited and recharged my passion. Isn't that wonderful? Always, that yeah. every day in this business, to, if you have another day in this business, yeah. is a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. And I find that, and that's one of the reasons why I love teaching so much. Mm -hmm. And I love teaching the teachers who teach at my schools. Sure, sure. Because I I'm, I'm always learning. And even from the students, when I walk through the room and I, I show them, and I'm going to do this on this side, and I'm going to use this brush, and now you do that on the other side, and they'll pick up another brush instead, and they'll do it another way. And I'll go, you know, damn, that works. Dark. Are we allowed to say <laughs> damn on this Yes, show? you can. No, but it's like, <laughs> Eureka. Something always comes up. You've done a tremendous amount of television. Yes. A tremendous amount. Predominantly. Now, uh, uh, if you were to, to select the type of, of, of medium that you would like to work in all of the time, or I mean, do you prefer, obviously you prefer television. You've been in television. Uh, it's hard to say. I am far too fickle to pick one. I love doing a, a soap opera, but yes. I've been on the YNR now for almost going on four years. Yes. But it's the first soap I'd done in almost 15. Yes. So I'd walked away from a lot of this. But I continue to do nighttime. I mean, Angela Lansbury did yes. five episodes yes. with her. I mean, just, you know, uh, recurring roles on so many things. But I like to bounce around. Yes. And then I would get a role and say, well, it's an okay script, but it's a great location. <laughs> Let's go to Peru. It's time to get out Let's of town. Let's go to Peru for a couple of months. And, oh, working with this young actress named Sandra Bullock. Oh yeah, she's she'll, she'll do something. <laughs> and so you know, so I love being and because people, especially on soap operas, they become so set in their ways yes. and beca become so comfortable yes. because of the security. But that, that was never my way. After a few years on a soap, it was like, oh, okay, I'm bored. Let's go yes, do something yes. else. But always going back to theater. Right. I, I worked General Hospital for an sure. awful long time. That's where your wonderful with, teacher, with, Kelsey Fry. Yes, exactly. We met on General Hospital many years right, ago. Right, right. And, and I found I couldn't believe how able the actors were to do this day after mm -hmm. day after day. And I, would think, I was thinking to myself, oh, my God. God, how dedicated they must be to this. They, they don't, do, do you find yourself looking at what you do as being a second life that you're actually living? Oh, absolutely, parallel universes, absolutely. And sometimes something will happen on the show, it's like, oh my God, this, 
this is kind of what's happening in my own life. Right. It's like, how did they know? How did they find out? Do the actors, do the, the act, do they talk to you? Do they bring you in and ask how you're doing? No, Judith, no, 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 no. I think they just, they just see it. <laughs> just see yeah. it. I don't know, but it really is. We are the, the soap actors are the work act, workhorse actors. Yeah. And when I did my first soap in, um, after graduating from college, uh, it was As the World Turns, mm -hmm. but at, in, New York, in New York, in New York, at CBS over on 57th Street yes. in New York, but half of the actors that I work with we're all doing Broadway at night. So we have such a theater background, yes. and it really is, well, you have three cameras here, yes. but it's the closest thing to proscenium theater we have. You have a script, it just never ends. Yes. But the volume, sheer volume. Isn't that this, wonderful? I worked That's two days, dream. I did three shows in two days this past week, I had over 60 pages of dialogue. My God. So it's, you know, it's, 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 you go home and do your homework. That's where the theater experience yeah, exactly. comes in, because when exactly. you're doing live theater, exactly. you've got to memorize Absolutely. everything. You Absolutely. Know, it's not like motion pictures where you're starting and you're stopping. You're starting and you're stopping. Take two, you know? take 20. Exactly. Doesn't exist. You know? Especially in soaps, because they go so fast. Right. It's inst instant acting, I sometimes call now, it. Now, t tell me this. What, 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 do you, what do you dislike about working in daytime drama? What do I dislike? Well, it's, at this point in my life, it's great to be back on a soap because I pretty much know when I'm going to work mm -hmm, in the morning. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm going to be finished. I know pretty much know what my schedule is. What do I dislike? Uh, sometimes because you just have to be so ready with what they're going to throw at you. Mm -hmm. You want me to play what now? <laughs> you want me to do what? But it's the closest thing again. So it's a it's a blessing and a curse because it's the closest thing to being in a repertory theater company yes. because one night you may be playing Desdemona, another right. night you're you're doing Othelia. Another time you're doing <laughs> drunken something, you know, Maggie or Maggie the Cat or, or Virginia Woolf. It's, it's a, so um, the speed, I would say, is probably speed, just yeah. a, we grind it out. Do they give you enough five time? Days a week. Do, do you no. feel they, they don't give you enough no, time? No, I mean, it's not that they don't. It's just the medium does not allow it. Mm -hmm. Shooting a 70 page script mm -hmm. five days a week. 52 weeks a year. We don't mm -hmm. go on a hiatus. Mm -hmm. So you, I could compare it to being on a soap, uh, like, uh, being on a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Your storyline will be very heavy, very right, heavy, right, very right, heavy. Right. And then it will wane and somebody else's storyline, but maybe it will be from five days a week to one or two days a week. Yeah. So you get mini vacations. But just the fact that you have to go home and do your homework. If you're, you're going to make control, it look. You're in control, aren't you? You are in control. In film, in film, the director is mm -hmm. more or less in control. Well, you have the luxury of in, time in yeah, film. Yes. Uh, even, even nighttime television, that you have more of a luxury of yeah. time. Yes. On daytime, we don't have the luxury of time. It's, you've you, got, you've to got to be there re ready to know your 20, 30 right. pages of dialogue if yes. that's what you've got yes. at 7 o'clock in the morning. That is amazing. And then do it the next I, day, I, and I, the next day, and the next day, and the next I, day. I can't fathom. I'm learning that Most much. Actors, I have worked with so many film actors in the various soaps. I've done mm -hmm. quite a few over the years. And film actors will come on and it, it just get rattled. They're just like, I, I, I can't do this. I cannot do this. How do you do this? How do you, how do you it's memorize like it? It's like theater. It's like theater. And they're mm -hmm. used to doing maybe one, maybe three pages a right, day. Right. And it's like, no, we're doing 70 pages today. Yes. And so it's it's very unnerving for a lot of film actors. Are you ever uh, fearful of how the storyline will turn? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's what I don't like. It's like, you want me to do what now? <laughs> but I was just doing all this great drama, and now you want me to go be a, a blithering idiot and buffoon? Yeah. But it's like, okay, make the adjustment. Yeah. I'm an actor. That's why I say, yes. a working actor. Yes. And I'm going to put on this makeup yes. today, or this persona today. Yes. But fi keep maintaining that through line. Tell us about so it. All Sorry, tell no. us about Gloria. How Gloria, you... Gloria, magnificent Gloria. Gloria is a, a middle-aged sex kitten. Mm. She just um, whoa. She ha she was a you know she's got a couple of crazy sons and she's you're, ha she's you're been... typecast. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> thank you, Joe. Thank you. Say, oh, you're much too young to be playing. That part. <laughs> um, no, uh, but she um, she had came from the wrong side of the tracks, yes. and she had a, a as I said, a son when I say. I had you when I was 15, darling. And don't, you're, it ain't changed. That story's not changed. I have two sons. They're both brilliant, but we're kind of the grifters. Yes. So Gloria's kind of gotten an, ed, got, gotten an edge over the years. And now she's kind of knows how to marry him rich and marry him and bury him. So you're conniving. Uh, a bit of a conniver, yeah. but, she's, but she's very sweet. She's got a heart of gold. Yes, but, yes. She's, but don't mess with her 
Who laughed yeah. out there? <laughs> That's so the producer. Laughed. That was the producer. Somebody must be watching the show. But she's a um, but she's a go getter. She wants power. She said, I, I've been, I, "All right, let's put it I, this way. I've been on the show for four years in another couple of months." Yes. I've been married five times. Oh my God! <laughs> and they've all died. Well, that's where the sex kitten part comes in. <laughs> yeah, that, you, you know those men. You know, <laughs> she knows how to keep them happy. <laughs> she, she also I, I, three of my husbands I've gotten through a little vial of powder called Viagra. Are we bored? <laughs> <laughs> we we've lost I think we're we've lost our like, audience. So like, that by uh, the way, that's Simon. By the way, that's Simon. That's Simon. That's our producer's my, Kelsey Fry's yes, dog. Yes, Simon's my boyfriend. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Um, have, have you, when you, you've worked, you say, with Angela Lansbury and mm -hmm. with so many of uh, mm -hmm. the old timers. Bill Bixby and yes. Michael Landon oh. and so many wonderful um, people. If you could pinpoint any one thing that you've learned from working with these, the old timers, the veterans of the, in the industry, uh, uh, what would you say that, that would be? Just that their sheer professionalism. I, I mean, digress a bit, but when I, whenever I direct and produce a show or a stage show, I say, okay, kids, or cast, yes. I want you to know two things about me. My father's a retired Air Force general, and I was raised by nuns. Now let's go to work. Oh my God. So I have been brought up with this, and because I started working when I was 14, and I had a sister, my older sister, who got me into the business, um, I would say, I don't want to go do that commercial this afternoon. I want to go play with my friends at the teen club. If you don't do this job, you'll never work in the business again. I'm 14, Patty. This is my older sister. who was a big star in Spain for many years. You but, worked but, in Spain. Oh, yeah. That's where I started. Yes. But, uh, but working with these icons of the industry, television or film and theater, mm -hmm. such as Angela, just their absolute professionalism. Yeah. Show up on time. I, had a, I was work, doing a Highway to Heaven with Michael Landon, and I was so impressed with him because... He, first of all, I had to. Sh I was living in Thousand Oaks at the yes. time. I had to show up at MGM at seven o'clock in the morning to audition for him, because he was still directing and writing yes. that week's yes. episode, and he had to get to the set. But I had to be there. But so I got the part, and uh, a beautiful, beautiful part, and that he'd written, and uh, and uh, uh, Maria, Maria, God, the wonderful actress from the fifties, Phil Noir. Ah, oh, I'll remember it. Sorry, um, but I had a little car accident on the way to work. And I'm yeah. calling the studio on MGM and da -da -da, I was so nervous. And I got to work and I said, Mr. Landman, and he just gave me a look. And he went, there are no excuses. Mm. You were hold, you held up, I didn't thank God held up the production. Yeah. But just that work ethic yes. that so many young people, and I, not that I'm sounding like I'm so old and wizened, but so many young people just think, oh, they can just show up and crank it out and yes. do it yes. without yes. investing the time. Yes. Having taught theater, People, people. What I would usually say to these kids: Oh, I'm going to be a star. I'm going to be a soap star. I'm going to be a uh, be on a sitcom. I'm going to make a million bucks. Right. I said, Yeah, but can you play Juliet? Mm -hmm. Or can you play Romeo yes, eight yes. performances a week yes. without losing your voice and maintaining your stamina without running your immune system into the ground? Yes, exactly. It's an athletic event. What we do yes. on stage, absolutely, and in, in film, and especially on and we make up artists just simply trying to keep up with you. And you're just like chasing yeah, us around because poor Travis, around. poor Travis, it's such a lovely job of me today. He's like, hold oh, still, hold oh, still. <laughs> <laughs> did it. Yeah. Well, you're, you're gorgeous to Thank begin you. with. You Thank don't you. need any of this. No, and and working with working with uh, your side of the industry and 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 uh, working as that it is a collaboration. Yes. The yes, artist, the makeup artist, yes. and the artist in the chair. Now, have you hired? a makeup artist to be your personal artist at any time during your um, career? Um, I, I, I'm, yes, Miss Kelsey Fry over there, your yes. producer. We've known each other for over 20 years and uh, and and lots of still still yes. uh, uh, photo shoots. Thank you, Kelsey. I knew yes. that I couldn't remember the name of it. Photo shoots and um, and a lot of stills over the years. We've done brilliant stuff. And we've got, I've got it on video of her saying, again, hold still. And I'm like fidgeting. I'm in, in now, you have energetic. to provide us with a few photos. Yes, I would love we to. Can, we can I would love to. I would love terrific. to. Some of the, I would love to provide you with, hopefully I can find it uh, when I go back to my home in Palm Springs, uh, the MacGyver that I did. Yes. Which uh, had this wonderful prosthetics and, and age aging thing that I just a little bit one of, of the aging. Westmores one of the Westmores this. Michael Westmore did it yes it was a, a Emmy nominated episode yes. of MacGyver yes. and that we shot up in Vancouver but it was uh, this I played this mad scientist who wanted to accelerate <laughs> the growth of, of food uh, so to stop uh, global um, not warming but Fam global famine, famine. Right. 
And uh, but it goes, of course, it goes awry. And uh, I'm just progression of day to day until finally I'm this crow, and you know, with these beads yes. and things coming out of the skull cap. And I was fascinated because I do love to produce and direct. And so, but having the mask on the face yes. with the straws yes. at the nose, yes. I was just like, what fascinated me the most though was how light as a feather these pieces are. Yeah, absolutely. These little latex yeah, pieces were under latex. the eyes, That's and right. then the jowls and yes, the whole thing. Yes. Very meticulously applied. Brilliant. Mike Westmore is, is a genius. He's, he's, he's one of the finest makeup artists today mm -hmm. in the industry. Well, I feel it's so honored to, you know, there's so many young actors, or not even so young, rarely yes. have that opportunity yes. to really go through that process. Yes. So I feel very, very fortunate. Yes. And to work with a Westmore. Uh huh. The, the famous Absolutely. West Morris of Hollywood. Absolutely. Do you know they're, they're going to be given a star on Hollywood I think, Boulevard? Uh, I think Mr. Travis just mentioned yes, that. Yes, yes. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah Brilliant. I, I, I'm going to be there. It's going to be a very historic event. Golly I'm looking gee. forward to Golly that. Gee. Yeah. Now, um, let me ask you this. Do you have any particular... Don't say Joe Blasco Cosmetics. I, 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 okay. Do you have any particular... <laughs> do you have any particular line of makeup that you prefer or that you use mainly you know, that you, you, that you require or you ask your makeup artist to provide you You know, I pretty much try to go with what uh, is, is, is on the set. Uh, they do, at YNR, they do use MAC. I have found it, I'm, it, it's okay for some things. It's a, I don't really like the texture of it so much. And I'm not even sure what, but she, it's just a little bit of this. There's some Lancome products. Mm -hmm. um, Shiseido. Mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, what's the proper? Shiseido. 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 Probably, I, I like their foundation. Shiseido. I love your Dermasil. As Thank I told you, yeah. my friend Kelsey gave me a, a pot of it that I guard <laughs> with my dear life. And I will literally go out, and yes, I do use Joe Blast. I can go out to the Emmys in those tiny little purses or the Oscars or wherever and have just my little Dermasil. <laughs> Sill, my lip gloss, and a lip liner. Because I can put the lip liner on the cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, put it on the eyelids. So it's all, so um, I'm just sort of a mixed bag. I'm, I'm kind of lazy. What's your pet peeve when working with makeup people? What have makeup people done that really disturb you? That they don't listen. That they don't listen. That I've been mm. working with this face for many, many years. But one of the things back in the day, uh, uh, when people still smoked, I mean, I, I know people right. still smoke, but, but I, I mean, it, it, when I first moved to Hollywood, I was doing a, 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 a movie of the week with Paul Wincos and um, called Farrell for the People. But this wonderful movie of the week, who was the sidekick in the, in the Mary Tyler Moore show? What's her name? I, 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 my mind's going blank. But, but this guy is doing my makeup and he's got a cigarette. <laughs> And he'd put this cigarette down and he'd come over with that sponge and I'm like, do you have to smoke and the cigarettes? Smell. It's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, and at five, he was just an old timer. He didn't right. get it. And I'm like some hot kid off the street. So it's like, no, please don't do that. But it's with people don't listen. They say, these are my little quirks. These yeah. are my little idiosyncrasies because it's my face that's respect going to be. Them. Please respect that. Yes. And I will work with you. And even Travis, I said, okay, I'd like to do this little thing. But I said, I'm putting your hands today. It's not a character. It's just me, pretty natural. But it, just share. We're both professionals, so please share with that. One makeup artist recently, um, I'm, I'm not a very hairy person. I've got very fine hair. And I'm, but I'm rather proud of my eyebrows. And this guy wanted to do a little tweaky on a couple of hairs. And I didn't have my glasses on. And it took me a day, tweezing. tweezing, and it took me a day to realize he'd cut the back eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. And Kelsey, thank God I told her about it. Kelsey, and she brought over this lash strengthener. She said, put it on your eyebrows. Put it on your eyebrows right. to help build, build it up again. And I've been, when, I, when I first started on the show, I was back in, in New York, in the Emmys, daytime Emmys, yes. were in New York. And I went to some shishi salon. I said, I'll do my makeup. And I did the, the, the what is it, it's a spray on makeup yeah, now. The airbrush. So, the airbrush, which I never had, which was kind of wonderful. But he even said, he said, my God, you have the most beautiful eyebrows. And I said, oh, yeah, Wendy in Palm Springs does them yes. for me. And but Where when is this, this? in Palm still Springs, it, yes, 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 yes. She well, just finally that, did them. Now that I've, it, her, Wendy Ray, and it's uh, the salon that I go to for facials and my hair. Yeah. It's Salon One Nineteen in Palm Springs. Perhaps we should go and visit her. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe we'll visit you, show. Wendy. Yes, you do yeah. a beautiful job. Thank you. I told I, every time I say Wendy, your eyebrows have gotten complimented in New York and L.A. and now Joe Velasco. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to do brows from a fellow by the name of Mr. Gilles. Who was I one? That name. He was one of the top yes. Max Factor makeup artists sure. in Rome, and when I was in Pittsburgh going to cosmetology school, 
I, I used to, you know, leave during lunchtime and walk around and go over to the department stores and check out the cosmetic counters. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day when I went into uh, Kaufman's department store there in downtown Pittsburgh, there was this Italian makeup artist doing this work. And he didn't speak a word of English. He only spoke Italian. And I spoke Italian, lucky for me. So I, was, I spent the entire, I didn't go back to school. I spent the entire day there. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the, Sophia Loren's makeup artists, and, and, but the one who actually designed her eyebrows. Which, are, I mean, she's got the eyebrows. Oh, my God, then, the best and, in and the even world. today. And she's still a beautiful woman. And, the, and the, at Max Factor at that time had a, a pencil, an automatic eyebrow pencil. It was called uh, a fine line pencil, Max Factor fine line pencil. And it had a little tiny, tiny little lead, you screw it up. And he would, and I watched him, and his hands would move like a mile a minute. And every stroke was absolutely perfect. And I could see oh, that he was, was the makeup yes, artist that yeah. did Sophia Loren. It was every, every stroke just perfect. And I thought to myself, I, I said, I asked him, I said, Mr. Gilles, I said, uh, how old are you now? He said, I'm 28. <laughs> and I said, oh, I just pray that when I'm 28 years old, I'm going to be able to do eyebrows like that. I was. And wow. I studied that and I practiced well, and I practiced. it's an art form and I was so, so right. angry and it took several months for me yeah. to get my, but it is, it, it just became, oh, please fill it in, mm -hmm. fill it in. So it's a, it, it truly is an art form. Do you, do you, your skin is gorgeous. Thank you. You're absolutely Thank a flawless you. skin. Uh, and you don't have very much makeup. She is wearing very, very little makeup. Uh, do you, what skincare products do you use? I use different things. I've used Epicurean over the years. Mm -hmm. I've used uh, 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 Pericone that we were talking about mm -hmm. before. Right now I'm do, using a few SkinCeutical products. I had a bad reaction to something that was supposed to take stuff off, you know, mm -hmm. a, a peel. And I had a really bad reaction because it had sulfites in it. Mm -hmm. I won't mention It'll the product, but it, it, I was just broken out from red. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I was at, back in Palm Beach visiting mm -hmm. my folks. They live in Florida. And I'd said, Mother, my skin, because it had crept up onto my eyelids, even though it's not supposed to, yeah. it was supposed to be, but it moves. And I'm yes, very yeah, animated, as you can see. So my eyelids were all crepey. And my mother said, just put Vaseline on it. I said, mm -hmm. Vaseline on this face? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I've spent thousands of dollars over the years. <laughs> Vaseline. Turned out to be the only thing that worked. Yeah, I put yeah. pure, plain old Vaseline. It's mineral oil. Now, exactly. Yeah. And uh, you think mineral oil, we're all horrified no, by no, mineral no, no. oil. But SkinCeuticals has this heavy duty um, skin balm. Yes. It's actually for the body. But I've been using that. Yeah. My face has gotten more mature, no, so I'm using more yes. heavier stuff. Yeah, but the mineral oil thing about mineral oil being so bad for you. See, this is just no, a, no, no. It's a marketing tool. It's a negative marketing tool to pull see. people away from using specific products. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with mineral oil. We've been basking and b dipping our babies in it for the past hundred years. I don't think that it hurt any of the babies. You know, baby oil is mineral oil, yeah. and you know most of the the, the the makeup removers are mineral mm -hmm. oil. You know, so it's it. Well, and, I've gone back to basic, and so I do use a skin. Pharmaceuticals product yes. and um, and the higher high, what's it called the hyaluronic acid that's supposed yeah, to help absorb, how, uh, but it's a it's but it's it's plain old I mean it's a glorified Vaseline mm -hmm. but it's got some E in it but mm -hmm. it's just it just put my skin back together mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. some of these things that were supposed to do so it's much soothing. for my skin it's just just you know just had me so broken out and peely and tight and crepey yes, yes. for a couple of weeks yeah. so um, well it's working I think simple I think simple is better. But being a good Southern girl, I always wear big hats and lots of big hats right. and lots of water. I know all the people out there that, that are fans of yours uh, are, are wanting to know these things. Yeah, and people all, often, I get a lot of fan when they say, Judith, you seem to have very nice skin, you yeah. know, for not a kid anymore. And I say, well, I work at it. But I say, they say, what do you do? And I say the top things, wear big hats, drink lots of water. And I personally think you're better off having a couple of glasses of wine or a martini better than that Diet oh, Coke. I'll go along with that. Yeah, here you go. It's <laughs> like, hello. There's no, no, the no. best skin advice There you go. It's just like, you know, heard. And, and then I say, but, and, but I do so much yoga. And so I stand on my head a lot. But it's about circulation. So right. I'm a great believer in exercise. Do, do, you, do you have a, a, do you prefer going to, an esthetician for your skincare 
you know, procedures, or do you do you prefer a dermatologist? I see a dermatologist because I have, um, having grown up a competitive swimmer and diver, and my father being from South Florida, and grew up on boats, and he and his brothers always had boats. Mm -hmm. So I have. And being very fair and Irish and the whole skin, there's a lot of skin. My father mm -hmm. and one of my sisters have had melanomas on mm -hmm. their face, and so I'm very conscientious about it. So I go to a dermatologist, but I don't do the laser thing. He just zaps me with some, um, what's it called, liquid nitrogen, mm -hmm. and uh, and gets it gets rid of the brown spots, mm -hmm. but it also gets rid of any my possible little problem areas. But I'll go and have wonderful, deep, relaxing, um, healing facials yes, a lot. Yes. I'm spa queen. Yes, very good. <laughs> What's your beauty? What, if you could pinpoint one thing that you could say, this is my, my most important beauty secret. Oh, Out, outside of the, you, you know, you're having fabulous skin yeah. to begin with. What, 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 and, and not the mineral oil or not the no, Vaseline. No, 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 I would say, I would have to say yoga. Yoga. In a, in a weird way, because I said if people would just learn how to breathe properly, yes. how to breathe deeply and fully, not yes. just from here, but all the way down, yes. they yes. would oxygenate the cells, yes. they would oxygenate their muscles, they would improve their circulation, they would improve their heart rate, they would right. improve their blood pressure. And But standing on their head, whether you do a passive yoga or yes. a more active, challenging yoga, yes. which is what I do 90% of the time, but it just stimulates, yes. it's not going to kill your joints, it's yes. not going to hurt your knees yes. if it's done improperly, and I blame that on the teacher. But I would say yoga because even bending forward and just um, doing an inversion, yes. just touching your toes, yes. letting the blood rush to your head, yes. you're strengthening the vessels in your head, first yes. of all, so you're reducing the um, uh, possibility of stroke, dementia, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you're strengthening mm -hmm. the blood vessels, but it's circulation to the face. Mm -hmm. I mean, how often do we go and get yeah, slapped around? I'm going to have to start standing. Uh, uh, stand on your head, yeah, Joe. Stand, on, stand head. on your head, just bend over. You know, just. You know, you're very knowledgeable of all of this. Well, this is, you know, this is, this is, this I, I work at it. I work yeah. at it. Now, it do, you, do you do the yoga at home? Or I do. do you... I, I, I do have a pretty good um, uh, home practice. I'm, I'm pretty disciplined about that. But I taught yoga for several years as well. So uh, I, I have a lot of background. But I know I have a wonderful studio here in town where I go. Yes. And if I'm not at the studio, I was there before I, I was there at 10 o'clock this morning yes. before I came to see you. Yes, yes. So I, this was my fifth yoga class this week. Amazing. So I'm, pr I'm pretty serious. About I don't know how you how do you find the time? Well, the, I have no life here. <laughs> <laughs> I work and I work out. I work. I go to the studio, and as I said, James, my other half. Yes. You know, we live yes. in the desert, so and my puppy dogs are yes. in the desert. So I have a very pretty. Yeah. And uh, when you have to st learn twenty or thirty pages of dialogue, it's like you don't yeah. have much life. So. Let, let's let's get back to the the uh, daytime drama okay. questions. I, I, I d d how how knowledgeable are you of of the lighting and that they're using, and are you happy with the way they light you? Seventy mm, percent of the time. Sometimes it's just not going to be that flattering, and we are in HD now. So, da, 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 da. Mm. but you know, they re on this particular show, they really do make an effort. Mm -hmm. And so we, have, Ray and Bill, are wonderful lighting designers, and they really do come out. They do take the they time here, yeah. and they may not take the time for rehearsal, mm -hmm. but they will take the time to make that show look pretty. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, I'm very kind. When I was 14 and got into show business or at commercials, in my first film, A Spaghetti Western, as a result of my older sister. But she said, she gave me very wise advice at that white, ripe old age of 14. She said, Judy, not <laughs> Judy, of course, <laughs> it's nice to be friends with a director, but really make friends with your lighting. lighting. Man. That's right. <laughs> I went, That's right. aha! Lighting. So, uh, heck with the director, and the lighting man. And the cameraman. So, and the cameraman. So Do they use a, 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 an OB lamp, a, 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 a small lamp? Above no, the camera? Not very no. frequently, no. No, no so it's, it's all over It's so all over It's very, very infrequent. I remember, I'm from the day whenever they painted all the, the walls black in all the daytime dramas that I worked. Really? They painted the walls black. Why? Why? Because they would, they, there were so many boom shadows everywhere so they wanted oh, so they would sure. there was there was no wallpaper there was nothing oh that's funny no 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 it's they we will stop they will they are very conscientious about stopping takes yeah, so so now shadows. what do you think of the new hd how, how do you feel about what changes have they made in your makeup actually it's uh, because my character again a little brassy and and uh, um so i i go a, a lot heavier and i've noticed in the past few months uh, making the transition to h or not a transition immediately into right. hd I haven't liked my makeup so much, so I've said, let's tone it down. 
yeah. and maybe instead of the it's quite so hard a line, yes. not, but, but smoke it out. Yes. And I've really cut back on my eyeliner yes. makeup because it all shows up. It's just it's yeah. just hard. It makes you look, and it, which it actually right. makes you look older. Yeah. And the older cameras, it was you know kind of fuzzy. You needed right. more to you can be pull the pumped contours. up. Absolutely. You know, yeah. But with this new HD, I find that even for Gloria, right. crazy flashy Gloria, right. there's lots of color and lots of wild clothes. You have the biggest eyes. I know. They are so gorgeous. Thank you. To, to what extent do you use those eyes? Oh, what do you with, think? With, <laughs> you she, think she just goes you for it on camera. Bit. Once, once upon a time, when, <laughs> when I was on General Hospital, I worked with a, a wonderful old guy, Car Jay. Jay played Nero in one of those wonderful Roman films. But he was a great friend of Betty Davis's, ah. and he used to say, "He said, Judy, Judith." You were um, the, he, and I was became referred to as the Betty Davis of daytime. And he said, "I've told Betty Davis Absolutely. all about you, and she watches you now." So because she's watching me on this show, so I ended up writing her a letter, and I said, and "I said, dear Miss Davis, I've been obviously a fan of yours for." my entire life but you know people say now they say that we're so much alike and they're calling me the Betty Davis of daytime I said I don't really think we'd look that much alike it's just about big eyes and lots of attitude <laughs> so, so, big eyes and lots of attitude uh, you know as far as the um, oh goodness I, I I haven't been watching a, too much daytime television well, you're a busy man you know, you got I, your I, thing I, going honestly there. I have to admit I haven't been but but what I have seen um, and I'm, I, we, at the studio in, in Orlando, we have several TV mm -hmm. uh, monitors. Uh, yeah, monitors. One is for ABC, CBS, sure. NBC, Fox, blah, blah. Um, I've noticed that most of the daytime dramas are very dark. They seem to be lit very dark for some reason. I, 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 why is that? Is there any? Well, I do, do, you know, do, I really is that ever discussed in production um, meetings? I or? see that once in a while on our show, but I think it's more uh, set-driven than than an intentional, uh, than a, a conscious uh, decision. I, you know, I'm, I'm really not smart enough to say about that, Joe. But I do know that one of the shows uh, back east, uh, speaking of lighting, guiding light, has now moved out of their set. It's a CBS show as well, I believe, and have yes. are shooting in some house in Brooklyn. They've taken over some house. It's all handheld with maybe a spotlight on top. Amazing? It is the most unflattered. Yes. I, I said I, I would have had I have to leave the show or just never watch it again See, what because it is so bloody unflattered. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But as far as the darkness, I think they're just maybe trying to compensate it's for some moody. of this HD and make it a little more moodier instead of just right, this right, broad right. stroke flat light. What about the sex? I have a sex scene tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Sex on it. Isn't I it said, as, as what, one of the production. <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> she's preparing. With, she's preparing. With, I, have, I have great men and I'm involved with now. As I said, I've been married five times on the show, but I'm married now to Ted Shackelford from Knott's mm -hmm. Landing Days. He's on the show. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've been married mm -hmm. to him three times. I killed his twin brother. He came back. And I married him again as his twin brother. And also Michael Gross from um, Family Ties. Yes. Played Michael J. Fox, his father. He's yeah. on the show. So he's the father, it turns out, of my older TV son. So Ted and I are going to be rolling in the hay tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's o only, in, only in daytime do you get middle-aged sex. You, 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 you seem to be having a tremendous I amount know, of fun. Go on. I mean, it does, she's exuding. I know. She's exuding <laughs> the enthusiasm and the fun no, you and the passion. Sex. You said the passion. Sex. Like well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going back to. I found the passion after losing it for a while, yes. becoming a little bit jaded. Every day is a treasure, even if it's like, you want me to and do what? Let me ask you this. You, you, you said you lost it for a while. Yeah. Well, in what way? I mean, how do you lose it? I just think, I just, I... Don't blame I, it on the city. No, 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 no. I, when I was in my 20s and after I graduated from college and went to New York and worked in New York for several years and joined the actor's studio and I did, I did all yes. this... And, but I made a silent prayer to myself, or I moved to L.A., and the very first job I did was with uh, Barnaby Jones, with him, um, the, what's his, bless his old heart, and, um, um. and, uh, and, but these guys, and I'm taking all the work very seriously, and yeah. these old character actors are sitting on the set, and they say, oh, shut up, kid, just take the check and walk, get to the bank and the hell with all the rest oh. of us, and I said, no Dear Lord, if I ever have that attitude, please let me have the good sense to walk away. Yes. Just let me, if it's not fun anymore, let yes. me go be a nurse or let me do something yes. else. And it stopped being fun. And I was reaching an age where 
women weren't getting the parts. You know, and yeah. there were, that really is that stereotype. So I dropped out and went to the desert. But um, I do. I, so I, I cherish every day. Yes. It is so darn much fun. Yes. It is such a great family. And why not? You know, I, I, you know this is, this you, is fun you, stuff. You live it, and, and they are very, if I may say so, very lucky to have you. Thank you. Well, it's when I came back to daytime, um, and because I was getting a little tired of the desert, and I said to James, I said, if I got a series in Vancouver, I'm going. I'm just, I'm burned out in the desert. I, I'm doing theater. I'm traveling the old globe. I'm doing my one-woman show. I'm doing an occasional film here and there, yes. 28 days. Uh, my second film with Sandra Bullock. Yes. And, uh, and uh, uh, the sweetest thing I did with Cameron Diaz, and you know, all this stuff. But yes. that's it. I need something. And this opportunity to come back to daytime came up, and I went, that's it. Yes. And I had to audition, and I went to the first audition, and I went, called James, called my agent, and I went, this is it. I'm getting it. Not going any further. That's done. Had three auditions, and that was nearly four years ago. Yes, yeah, sweetheart, we have to break just for okay, a second. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're so wonderful. Thank you. This information is so incredible. Oh, you know, I it's, hope it helps it's somebody so, out it's, there. Yeah, they, your, no, this is this is so helpful to the makeup artists, the student makeup artists, and to uh, yeah. professional makeup artists mm -hmm. to really hear this. Oh, if, great. You know, from from, a, from an actor. Uh, we're going to be right back right after these words. Don't you go away. <laughs> 